O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. In this uncertain season of Advent, we wait, hoping, hoping God is coming to us. In the vagueness of these days, we try to listen, hoping, hoping the word will be whispered to us. In the weariness of our times, we wait, we listen, we watch, hoping, hoping, the Spirit will be found in our midst. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen.
Our Old Testament reading tonight is the Psalm, Psalm 110. The Lord says to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. The Lord sends out from Zion your mighty scepter, rule in the midst of your foes. Your people will offer themselves willingly on the day you lead your forces on the holy mountains. From the womb of the morning, like dew, your youth will come to you. The Lord is sworn, and he will not change his mind. You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. The Lord is at your right hand. He shall shatter kings on the day of his wrath. He will execute judgment among the nations, filling them with corpses. He will shatter heads over the wide earth. He will drink from the stream by the path. Therefore, he will lift up his head. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Then the Old Testament song is from 1 Samuel, the second chapter, the song of Hannah. My heart exalts in the Lord, my strength is exalted in my God. My mouth derides my enemies because I rejoice in my victory. There is no holy one like the Lord, no one besides you. There is no rock like our God. Talk no more so very proudly. Let not arrogance come from your mouth. For the Lord is a God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. The bows of the mighty are broken, but the feeble gird on strength. Those who are full have hired themselves out for bread, but those who are hungry are fat with spoil. The barren has borne seven, but she who has many children is forlorn. The Lord kills and brings to life. He brings down to Sheol and raises up. The Lord makes poor and makes rich. He brings low. He also exalts. He raises up the poor from the dust. He lifts the needy from the ash heap to make them sit with princes and inherit the seat of honor. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's, and on them he has set the world. He will guard the feet of his faithful ones, but the wicked shall be cut off in darkness, for not by might does one prevail. The Lord, his adversary, shall be shattered. The Most High will thunder in heaven. The Lord will judge the ends of the earth. He will give strength to his king and exalt the power of his anointed. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Then our New Testament reading for tonight is from the first chapter of Matthew's Gospel, reading verses 18 through 25. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. For the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been written by the Lord through the prophet, Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had borne a son, and he named him Jesus. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God stands forever. Amen. And then our New Testament song is Mary's song uh, from the first chapter of Luke's gospel. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For you, Lord, have looked with favor on your lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. 
You, the Almighty, have done great things for me, and holy is your name. You have mercy on those who fear you from generation to generation. You have shown strength with your arm and scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. You have filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. You have come to the aid of your servant Israel to remember the promise of mercy, the promise made to our forebears, to Abraham, and to his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, both as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Then our reflection continues the series of readings from the book, The Jesse Tree. And the one tonight is entitled, The Longest Night. Tonight we will be hosting our annual Longest Night service at the church. Called Blue Christmas in some communities, it is a respite offered to those for whom this season is not holy, but lonely to those whose times are not filled with joy, but with grief, to those whose homes are not filled with family and friends, but with the empty ache of loss. This is the ninth consecutive year we have offered this special service. If truth be told, it probably grew out of the chronic grief I have experienced over the situation with our son, the recognition that his brokenness will only be made whole in God's future that the pain I carry around in my heart will be a lifelong companion. It is obvious from the response each year that this is a service that speaks to many people in a very genuine and needed way. Many of the same folks return and many new people come. As I set up for the sanctuary for the service this afternoon, I wondered, will Joseph be here tonight? I can imagine the feeling of loss Joseph must have experienced when he heard that Mary was pregnant. He must have sensed that any respect his family and friends had for him had vanished. As he wandered the village streets, he must have wondered how many people were whispering about him or laughing behind their doors. The dreams he had harbored all his life about marriage, about life with Mary, about starting a family were now nightmares. As his family pressured him, to dump the woman he loved with all his heart or demanded the ultimate punishment for her. The doubts he entertained were worse than any physical torment that Mary could have inflicted on him. Was her story true, this wild tale about an angel? Could he believe the dream that had danced in his head the other night? Or was that just the sour wine he had drunk in his despair? Was he really a part of that prophecy the rabbi was always quoting from the book of Isaiah. The loss of a loved one, a job, a dream, broken promises and shattered relationships, doubt about the future and nightmares from our past. All reasons why people come to our longest night service. All reasons why we offer this sacred space and this holy moment for ourselves, for friends, for strangers, for all the Josephs around us. And then this is the prayer that goes with the reading. He might have passed me on the street today as I walked the dog. She might have been the neighbor with few decorations on her house, or the child with his eyes widening at all the toys in the store, but none in his hands. Broken people, lonely people, hopeless people, your people, broken-hearted God. Heal us in this season of hope and promises, tender God, as you have promised. Amen. Now I invite you to join with me in a few moments of prayer. Let us pray. We have had enough feast of anger and bitterness, so come, God, who waits to be with us, to feed us with the simple bread of heaven. Every day we are handed streaming mugs of tears, so come to hold the cup of hope to our lips. 
Every day seems to be the longest day in this year, which goes on and on. So come, God who approaches, using the stars in the night sky to light the way to the grace we long to find in Bethlehem, where we will find a home with you when all the power and wealth of the world slams their doors in our faces, leaving us huddled with all our fears and worries. We are deafened by all the arguments, the rhetoric, the foolish boasts, the outright lies. So come, God, who is our peace, to fill our ears with the angelic songs, to pour love and wonder into the emptiness of our souls. We give you thanks, O God, for this day, for the beauty of creation, for music that we heard in church or from children and grandchildren from carolers, or on our devices. We give you thanks for the stars in the night sky. We give you thanks for those who continue to reach out and love us and care for us and to demonstrate your love in our lives. And in the silence of these moments, O oh God, we would lift up all those prayers of thanksgiving and praise that we carry in our hearts. And we lift up prayers for others, for our communities, families and friends, neighbors, our world. We pray for all those for whom this is indeed not the most joyous time of the year. For those who sit across tables and look at an empty chair. For those for whom grief and loss will be a constant companion for those who wonder about what the coming days and weeks and months and even year will bring. We pray for those who continue to seek to be faithful in this time. We pray especially for all our communities of faith, and especially for the ministers, elders, and members of the churches in East Midlands Synod and the other synods. We pray for those who continue to face the challenge of COVID-19, all those key workers, NHS, care home staff, teachers, people who are researchers working on new medications and new vaccines, people who are trying to get more vaccines and boosters into people's arms for those exhausted people that we've mentioned, for those who are now be living under new restrictions because of this Omicron variant and the continued rise in cases caused by Delta. We pray for those who are hospitalized, for those who have died, and for their families. In particular, we continue to pray for Charlotte and Martin Ferris recovering as they continue on the road to recovery. We pray with Liz for her 12-year-old great-nephew Ryan and for her daughter Emma as she continues to go through her treatments. We pray with Prince for Cheryl, for their journey of faith and companionship and caring and love. We pray for their nation and other nations who struggle to be able to receive the kind of medical care, the medications, the vaccinations that we privileged people are able to get. We pray with Andy for Mick, his dad, and we give thanks for Liz and Ruth in their ongoing care of Mick. We pray with Judith for Catherine, for her continued strength and peace and healing. We pray with Akatea as she returns to work, uh, continues to hope for strength and energy. We pray for the Reverend Graham and Vera Maskery. We pray for all those who grieve for the Reverend Eric Allen, especially for Joan. We pray for the Reverend for those who grieve for the Reverend Vernon Broomfield Payne, especially for Kate. We pray for those who grieve for David Scott, especially for Sue, uh, one of the pastoral consultants in Northamptonshire. And in the silence of these moments, oh God, we would lift up those prayers, those people, those concerns that we carry in our hearts and can only speak to you.
Come God and community holy and one, come to assure us that out of these uncertain times will come the advent of new life, new hope. Amen. And now in your own tradition, your own language, your own form, I would invite you to join with me in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, how would be your name? Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Now may the peace of the rolling waves, the peace of the silent mountains, the peace of the singing stars, and the deep, deep peace of the Prince of Peace be with you now and forevermore. Amen.
Good night, friends.